And in that regard, it gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. James Hospitalis, who maybe will be as brief, no, maybe not, as brief as he was um, this, this afternoon, um, to address us on engaging the non-health and private business sector in the achievement of the NCD-related SDGs. Dr. Hospitalis. Thank you very much. I will not be as short as earlier. I'll spend five minutes and cover the first half of the slides, and the last 10 minutes I'll cover the second half of the slides. Um, this presentation focuses on the non-health sector and business sector and how they can be involved in the fight against NCDs. And I thank the Healthy Caribbean Coalition for the opportunity to give this talk. Um, I hope that future fora like this would actually have a lot more focus on uh, private public people partnerships. Uh, do I have a clicker? So I said fast in the first bit and uh, this is the topic of the talk. And I have a disclaimer, I'm not a partnership fundamentalist. If there's something you can do without partnering, you can't have babies without getting married. Some things you can't do without partnering. <laughs> well, maybe you can. Okay, okay. <laughs> and these are the points I will cover. Why partner? A bit about the, it's a buzzword, but how do you actually get that activated? I will explain a little bit about our policy for partnering with the private sector and civil society. Look at the business case from a public, private, and civil society point of view and share some core for examples. And I will conclude with a framework for assessing opportunities for partnership on NCD prevention with the private sector. Um, the NCD related SDGs were shown over the last couple of days more than once. And these are the targets and many of them will not be achieved without collaboration with non-health actors and or with the private sector. Beyond SDG number three, there are several uh, uh, related SDGs from hunger, nutrition, security, to water, to uh, safe and healthy cities, um, inequality, etc. And if we ask ourselves why partner and what is it we're talking about, well, it's a cross-sector type of partnership approach, which is an ongoing relationship that takes place between different sector organizations, combining resources, sharing risks and rewards towards specific objectives that they're working on while, while you achieve your own individual objectives. And the reasons for that have to do with getting complementary resources, have to do with being able to be more innovative by combining capacities. You get quality and legitimacy if it's, if it's in certain aspects of the partnerships, more sustainability and more cost effectiveness. So that's, that's sort of theoretical. Within the Caribbean region, there are a number of potential uh, private and non-health uh, actors. You have all the government institutions, ministries of agriculture, education, tourism, and so on. You have the civil society groups, not only HCC, but you've got Caribbean Farmers Network, you've got some active environmental climate groups. And then in the private sector, you have from, from finance to marketing and communications, the UN, some bilateral partners and a range of Caribbean regional institutions. Those of us in health may not be so familiar with this alphabet soup, but those are our federal institutions that provide guidance to the other sectors of the country's economy. So when we talk about multi-sector action from a health point of view, the other sectors, education, trade, they have a regional organization that corresponds to them. So part of what I'm trying to do is to build a coalition at that level to help accelerate action on the ground. Uh, moving from buzzwords into action, how do we get capacity development in this area? One of the things is, is the, the building that national and regional capacity in utilizing the tools of partnerships. We have not invested in this. We've talked about it and there's been no systematic training across sectors and how you actually do public private sector partnerships. There's a lot of shroud waving and fear because of how the tobacco industry has behaved and how Food and, 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 and alcohol borrow the same tactics. They're not tobacco, but they take the same tactics. Um, if you look at 
uh, how to, one of the ways to do that is actually to train together, train together in the same room with people from private sector and civil society and government so that you better understand the different perspectives of each. There is a whole life cycle to public-private sector partnership thinking and architecture, a, a phase of scoping and building. You may sign an agreement, you manage and maintain it, you review and revise it. When the problem has declined or gone away, you wind up the partnership, which some partnerships need to do and move on. Uh, if you look at the other aspects of moving from buzzwords, uh, absolutely important is a policy framework. Most of the private sector does not respond unless there's a clear policy framework. So government leadership is super important in this process, uh, including approaches to manage conflict of interest and the proper identification of all the stakeholders involved, the due diligence that needs to be involved in this sort of work. I'm going to slow down a little bit more now. This is our corporate governance framework for partnerships approved by the board and the Council for Human and Social Development. It includes elements of partner selection, uh, partnership selection, managing conflicts of interest, requirements of all partnerships and due diligence uh, in, in, in our work. So we just had a partner approach, approach us recently and this body is setting up a Caribbean health research something. And you discovered that the person who's proposing it is 100% owner of Pepsi Cola factory in Houghton, Michigan. I said, no, we don't want to do business with you but you're going to get a notice in the near future about a group doing this uh, in the Caribbean. Well, we have chosen not to partner with them because of applying this. You say, well, no, we don't want to, that, that's not going to look good. That doesn't make sense. And the policy has some guidelines that outlines types of partnerships. It could be an in-kind contribution. It could be a financial contribution. It could be coordination. Deliver, you don't pass money, but you deliberately work to get synergy or effectiveness, or you have a co-action partnership. Uh, there are principles enunciated in the policy of transparency, mutual benefit, accountability, and results orientation. And there are elements, uh, time is spent on how you select partners. There are desirable partners that have the same value and ethos that we might have and that obtain results. And then there are excluded partners, basically arms, ammunition, tobacco, weapons, uh, <coughs> pornography would be on this list. And high scrutiny partners are partners whose main business, big food, big alcohol, want to be careful with them. Oil and gas extraction companies, not saying don't do it, but be careful and have measures, have measures in place that manage the conflict of interest uh, that is inherent in that. Uh, further thoughts on the partner selection criteria to look at the, the study the partner you're going to work with and does it actually improve health outcomes and so on. Um, f in terms of further thoughts on the moving from buzz to understand to, to action, it's really, uh, and it's come up a few times before, the packaging, how language is used. So that point about the daily language of the actor, I remember about 20 years ago working on foodborne disease and health problems in the tourism industry. And I went to the Caribbean Board of Directors and I had a presentation on diarrheal disease. Behind my back, they used to call me Dr. Diarrhea. It didn't get traction until about two years when I went back and my slide said, improving profitability through attention to health and hygiene. And oh, somebody has something to say about improving profit. That is their day-to-day -day language, profit. So if you want to talk to a company about it, how are you going to improve profit, quality, competitiveness? Not necessarily the first thing should be health. There are drivers of this that go beyond profit. There are drivers of partnership for the public sector, uh, drivers of partnership for civil society. This is a civil society group, so I'll leave the slide up for a little bit. That uh, why it is civil society uh, may, may wish to partner. This is another alternative definition of the PPP uh, from, from uh, here quoting Siddharth Chatterjee from Kenya. Political will, public policy, then the partnership. So get the policy first, get the science first. And in, 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 right. Some of the examples from us at the Caribbean Public Health Agency. This, you've heard me mention, is a six point policy package for healthier food environments. It began with science, a research to policy meeting in 2013, looking at the obesity epidemic, coming up with a plan of action to promote healthy weight and prevent childhood obesity. 
And then in November 2015, uh, uh, a signal paper called Childhood Obesity, Economic Sector Related Aspects of Prevention. And the Council of Trade and Economic Development accepted this and this later became known as the Six Point Policy Package. In March of last year, a meeting of the heads of about a dozen CARICOM institutions, uh, uh, March of 2016, agreed uh, to work together. And in July, the heads of government gave a mandate for this multi-sector work. And last year, we were very pleased in, in Barbados, uh, the CXC hosted us a meeting of 10 or so CARICOM institutions and other agencies to come up with a roadmap for, for working on this. And then an interagency technical committee has been set up. Um, national consultations through trade and industry in some countries has commenced with predictable industry pushback. And there's to be a joint co-ted, which is the Council of Trade and Economic Development and Social and Human uh, in July. This slide was used as a shock slide with the trade audience, and it worked. They didn't complain about us trying to get into their turf and interfere with sugar and tobacco. This slide uh, is from someone in the Eastern Caribbean, an 11-year-old boy who is almost doomed because of what his health future and cost future has for him. And it's not because he's greedy, it's because of the obesogenic environment that we live in. But the trade sector is aware of childhood obesity. It's been like a Trojan horse that you can get into dialogue with them uh, that they would resist if you just go to talk about tax. Um, moving along, this is what they were invited to do and what was uh, the points in the six-point policy package, mandatory nutritional labeling front of pack, which was described yesterday by CrossQ, standards and guidelines for schools, food marketing and portion sizes, and so on. So that's, uh, that is working as a non-health non uh, 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 collaboration or partnership. I want to touch on our tourism and health partnership. You may know this region has 50 million tourists a year. We have 3,500 hotels and a half a million hotel rooms uh, for a billion dollar industry. Three years ago, we signed the Memorandum of Understanding with the Caribbean Hotel Association and the Caribbean Tourism Organization, which actually includes health and wellness in the workplace, although we haven't done anything about that. The focus has been on health security on food safety, on Zika, and, and on building up this whole area. But think of that platform. You know, uh, the UN CARICOM had a pledging meeting on uh, after the storms in New York. And at the end of the day, in 60 presentations, 1.4 billion was on the tally sheet. The following week, I was in Jamaica. This is Jamaica, right? Bobby. And Prime Minister Hollis hosted a meeting with the President of the Dominican Republic and the head of the World Tourism Organization. And I met people like the CEO for Ryu. Remember what I told you, the day before they reached 1.4 billion, right? The CEO for Ryu said our last four properties, 400 million capital each. Wow. In the Caribbean. Imagine if they had put a small fraction of that to biking and walking provisions for the employees and their families to go back and forth to the new plant. We've put a half a million new hotel rooms into the Caribbean in the last five, six years. We've never talked to the industry about how could we build some more health promoting environments. It's brownie points for them. It's not hard to do that. So there's a lot of potential in that platform for partnering within our context is already agreements. There's a Caribbean regulatory system for pharmaceuticals and medicines um, in collaboration with PAHO. We have a regional regulatory unit that now does fast track recommendations. It is intended to do three things, increase access for patients who need it, decrease cost to governments, and it make it easier for the industry right across Caribbean. And this has had a lot of engagement and negotiations with manufacturers and distributors. Um, and we're really looking at how this, for example, in the NCD space, could be used to convene uh, manufacturers and distributors and look at the cancer drugs, which are expensive but effective, and some countries are just not getting them, so patients don't have access. Um, I'm about to finish, and this is my very last slide. So you have to applaud this slide, because I still have all night making it. <laughs> Let me orient you. Let me orient you to this slide. So on this axis, is conflict of interest. Up here is high, down here is low. This is meant to be something about how easy it is to do this or not. Is it easy or is it quite difficult? And so if you draw it, this is a two by two table. And so this top half is don't go there. This is tobacco, too high conflict, arms, ammunition, porno. There's a new foundation for a smoke-free world. Don't go there, that's the Philip Morris Foundation. There's fast food companies or alcohol and education partnership where fast food companies are in the school. That is bad conflict of interest. It shouldn't be happening. 
Uh, but if you flip down here, I call these the no-brainers. Because here are a lot of things where there's low conflict of interest, where there's a lot of co-benefit. That's where we should be putting some effort. Some of them align with the WHO best buys. One of them I submit is our six point policy package, but a financial sector partnership is crying out. Somebody touched on that earlier. Sajikor, Guardian Life, the social security institutions are hemorrhaging because of NCDs, but they have no mandate for prevention. Our social security institutions sit on $22 billion. They're hemorrhaging and they're on their way to insolvency according to the World Bank International Monetary Fund. So I see a lot of scope there. Um, I see the CARICOM smoke-free zone as, as a, as, as a win-win. I could go through all of these, the, the cyclovias phenomenon of South America, that's easy to do. There's low conflict of interest, it's done at the local level. We should be really pushing that. Uh, the text to quit partnership. If you run a text to quit partnership with Digicel and Lime and people stop smoking so much, that's more money to spend on cell phone credits. Poor people spend money on rent, food, cell phone credits, Marijuana, alcohol, hair and nails. So if you spend less on alcohol and tobacco through a text to quit program, you have more money to spend on cell phone credits. Should be, we should talk to the, to the telephone companies about doing a deal like that. Over here are harder things to do, but the conflict of interest is lower and we should be pursuing them, such as dietary salt reduction. It's a best buy. The 27 or 30 countries in the world that have published on this, they're all, it's all industry working with, with government. The conflict of interest is low there. An alternative transportation, bike and walk type of program with the Caribbean Association of Local Governments, with tourism, sports, and CSOs, cross, cross uh, fertilize it to tourism. This is good for the planet. It's good for energy security. And it's good for health, by the way. It's good for health, yes. Uh, if I was presenting to a certain audience, I would start with that. With another audience, you start with the planet. With another audience, you speak about energy and how much saving there will be in the economy and the benefit to tourism and the attractiveness of the place. So it's about reframing the arguments, some of these, to actually get them done. Um, I spent a long time on this, but it's meant to help us, help me think, help us think, and to act instead of being paralyzed about uh, conflict of interest. Oh, we can't work with the private sector. We can work with the private sector, especially if you agree, in this kind of space down here where conflict of interest is low and it's relatively feasible what is being proposed. So uh, just have one or two more slides. Uh, this is a concept note for a stakeholder dialogue on economic dimensions of NCDs uh, that we're uh, trying to get uh, going. Um, and I want to look at, at the last slide, a couple of slides on treatment and the care cascades now with diabetes. And these are care cascades that have been constructed out of uh, uh, an analyzing the step surveys of countries in a joint project. Uh, uh, and if you look at this slide, this is for five of the countries, the preliminary data for diabetes. If you have an estimate of all adults with diabetes in these countries, you see that 87% have had glucose measured at some point, but not everybody was aware of their diagnosis and so on. 42% popula population level control. Each of these steps is an opportunity for a public-private partnership because to close this 13% gap, you need barbershops, uh, uh, communication, education, people to promote, to come and get you screening, and so on. Each step. For this one, the treatment adherence piece, we're very good to have a partnership that includes pharm pharmaceutical companies, uh, CSOs, uh, med tech companies, telecom companies, reward people with some cell phone credits for taking their medicine or walking their 150 minutes a day. It doesn't cost the, the companies anything extra to do that. But those are the kinds of things that I think could help us. In Trinidad and in and Tobago and in Jamaica, there are these large already policy programs in place. So how can we apply this kind of approach to uh, create these cascades and then have discussions around each of the steps and how we get the public-private partnership to tackle it. And the very last slide, uh, we have a big problem. We're drowning in the costs. But there are solutions and they require everyone to work together. Over the last 15 minutes, I've tried to cover some of what that working together means, both from a theoretical and uh, applied, uh, share with you some of the coffee examples. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hospitalis.